I feel really proud for being here today. After three years of work with many of you, we are here to take a look at the main outcomes of the RRI tool projects and to enjoy a space common of reflection on the future of responsible research and innovation and of the research and innovation system uh, as a whole. It hasn't been an easy project, so you can remember three years ago how, let's say, fuzzy was uh, the concept of responsible research and innovation for many of us. And um, it's been quite far from obvious to bring together 26 institutions and bring something really practical uh, for the community uh, to be useful to apply responsible research and innovation. So during these two days, I'm not, gonna to, not going to repeat that. We're going to see how RRI, how the situation of RRI is today. And tomorrow we will see how can it help the research and innovation system uh, uh, to be more sustainable and social in the future, but that will be tomorrow. And in this session now, what I will do basically is um, well, there is not only the RRI toolkit as an outcome of the project, but uh, we have been going through a quite, we would like to say, responsible innovation process during these three years. And we've been engaging hundreds of people, of participants all around Europe uh, during the, this long phase of, of participation. So what I will do is to give an overview first of the of the project as a whole, and then I will introduce Jacqueline Brerse, Melanie Smallman, and Rosalia Vargas, uh, who will explain the specific outcomes of the project that help us build the toolkit and the, and the training scheme and, and all the, what the project has come, come out with. So uh, before I invite them to the stage, um, let's say, let's start with one of the first key ambitions of RRI tools. So it was to contribute to bring an abstract concept, quite uh, something that was quite an abstract content, con, uh, concept, uh, into an action. And for that, a consensus on a practical definition was needed. And this is where Jacqueline Brerse and her team came into play. So Jacqueline is a professor of innovation and communication in health and life sciences and head of the Athena Institute at the Freie Universiteit Amsterdam. And she's going to explain us uh, all that in a minute. At the beginning, uh, so the Athena team has been working during the first year of the project for this practical applicable definition of responsible research and innovation that could serve us as a basis for the toolkit. And also they coordinated the gathering of responsible research and innovation inspiring practices that are part of the toolkit as well. It would be interesting to remember at the beginning we had one big dilemma with the definition, or oh, several of them of them, but at least one. One of the key questions was the coexistence of the different views that we had for of responsible research and innovation. For the European Commission, it was important to rely, and, it, and that was quite obvious, and I understand, to rely on previous policy efforts as uh, ethics and research integrity, or public engagement, or open access, or gender equality. But for part of the academic community, it was important to develop a definition based in process requirements and fundamental values. And that was very important for the academic community and conceptually we were, we all agreed with that. Uh, values as inclusivity, openness and reflexivity and so on. And they thought that it was, that was important to sustain the development of, of responsible research and innovation on a solid basis. So RIA tools got to the conclusion, and that was, I would say, one of the main outcomes of the, of the project, that those two views were valid, and that they both brought opportunities at a practical level, and that this is what we did. As well, the transition of RRI from the academic arena to the day-to-day -day of researchers needed a huge collaborative effort of understanding between the players, I would say of deliberative thinking between the players, something that didn't happen in, in the Brexit, uh, issue, probably. And, um, but it happened in RRI tools. Uh, so, and here is where the University College London came into play, let's say. So Melanie Smallman is going to be here after Jacqueline Brerse. After we learned about the definition, the first definition, uh, she is from the uh, a researcher at the University College London, and together with Professor Steve Miller, to whom I would like to thank his wise advice during the whole uh, project, have been responsible of the widest multi-stakeholder pan-European consultation on, on responsible research and innovation. 
uh, and as well of the extensive training program of, of RRI tools. So the consultation that we did in 2014 engaged more than 400 institutions, and it was designed together, and I'm going to jump to another, to the other uh, pillar of the project. It was designed together with Excite, the European Association of Science Centers and Museums, whose former president, Rosalia Vargas, is today here with us to explain us the other pillar of the project, the network of the RRI hubs, which have been a clear participation in the succeed of the project, if we can call it like that. So Rosalia is president of Ciencia Viva, the national agency for scientific and technological culture of Portugal, and was president of Excite during the first two years of the project. Rosalia and her team, Carlos, Gonzalo, and many others, they have been coordinating 19 RRI hubs around Europe, that have been covering 30 countries of the, European, uh, of the European space that have been disseminating, advocating, and training on RRI. So the 19 hubs have been coordinated by members of the consortium, those 11 science museums, five foundations, etc., together with several other institutions in their countries, from universities to science entrepreneurs or NGOs, that have been in a mutual local understanding of RRI and have been jointly coordinating the actions at national level. There were several arguments in favor, let's say, of thinking global and acting local. Uh, one of them was the regional and cultural amazing diversity of Europe, but as well the different stages of evolution of the national, uh, national and regional research and innovation systems. So the role of the hubs have been key in the project, and thanks to them, we have been doing activities from Sevilla to Lulea, or from Dublin to Kiev, and we have reached more than 3,000 people, and we are still ongoing. Uh, Rosalia, Melanie, Jacqueline, and, and their teams have been uh, key, key partners of the project, but not only. There have many, been many others. I didn't me mention Euroscience who's been taking care of dissemination in a great way, and, and especially I would like to, to thank Kirsi Kasha and Rosina Malagrida, who's the deputy coordinator of the project, and who was key in its initial design as well. So what about the toolkit? I have one or two pages uh, to explain them, to explain it, but I think I'm going to, to skip that. I'm going to be very fast because we have a very nice video to show, and, and we're going out of time to have some questions and answers. So, so basically, we've been seeing the challenges. Uh, Ulrike Felt already said at the beginning the tension between entrepreneurship and, and uh, citizen, uh, science citizenship. We saw several others. For example, that RRI is context dependent, and some say that it, it shouldn't be applied in the same way in different sectors of science. But uh, although it is important to remind that some of the missions of RRI as gender equality are basic preconditions that should be applied and mainstream throughout the research and innovation system. Um, as well, we had to find uh, a specific uh, language to speak to every different stakeholder, and that was very difficult. So uh, Ulrike was mentioning as well, when we think about who do we have to be useful for, is you have to think about this young basic researcher who is struggling for a permanent position maybe, and whose career is evaluated only about the number of papers that he published or she published. So, or to a CEO of a big technological biotech company who has to demonstrate every day the efficiency of their actions and how do they affect the bottom line of the company. So we are start struggling with different languages of different stakeholders. But uh, we had good things. There was one very important thing. There were many resources out there that, uh, because somebody said as well, because uh, I think it was Jacqueline, that um, RRI, maybe it's a new concept, but it talks about old values generally. So we had many different tools that explain how to foster uh, gender equality. We got the gender net portal. We had the Engage 2020 project showing different engagement methods and so on. So the first thing we did with our RRI tools we, was try to gather the best tools that we could find in the different key issues of RRI. We then put together the 36 inspiring practices 
uh, some key, key articles and policy papers, and that's a very long process, but I won't, don't, I won't explain it now. And maybe I will just uh, stop for a second in something which was important. We had a stakeholder engagement uh, in November 2015, an expert meeting, where we brought the first beta version of the toolkit. And we had a lot of controversy. We thought we, we had already quite a good uh, product, but they told us it's nice to have all that uh, different tools, but if you don't explain me how to apply them, how to apply them in this ambitious, holistic uh, meaning of RRI, you're not teaching me anything. I can find those tools as well on the website. So this is what we did. One of the main outcomes of the project was to write 36 guidelines that explain how to use the different tools in different contexts for different stakeholders. And if there's something I believe we can be proud is possibly of that, apart from the many joint projects that have been uh, borning uh, from RRI tools. So another important one is the self-reflection tool that has been mentioned that as well, coordinated by the Cen Center of Social in in Innovation in Vienna. And that's it, I would like to see the video now and maybe this way we will understand better how the toolkit looks like. Are you interested in responsible research and innovation? Would you like to learn, implement or promote them? Welcome to the RRI Toolkit. If you're a newcomer to RRI, make sure to base your use on your profile or your interests. Wherever you come from, in our toolkit, you'll find information and resources to meet your needs. Here, you'll learn why your involvement is important for science and innovation. Are you unsure how to apply RRI to the challenges you face in your daily work? Find guidance and concrete examples on how to use the toolkit resources in particular contexts. Take a look at approximately 30 guidelines and choose those that suit you best. Also, use our search engine to browse hundreds of resources. You'll find tools, inspiring practices, projects and library elements. You may be looking for specific contents. Our engine has multiple filter options that will help you optimise and customise your search. Would you like to know how responsible your activity is? If so, check out our self-reflection tool. It will help you think deeply about your professional practice. And for an in-depth knowledge of RRI, use our fully adaptable training modules, sessions and resources. Our training aims to help you bring the concept to life and understand how to make the most of it in your own work. You can also enrol in one of our training sessions. There may be one closer to you than you think. We add up to over a thousand people and organisations eager to collaborate with you. Once you've registered, you'll be able to exchange experiences and help build knowledge with a growing community of RRI practitioners around the world. So jump into the RRI Toolkit and become familiar with the RRI concept. Learn how to put RRI into practice. Discover new resources and share your own. Find new partners and bring RRI projects to life. Wait no longer, join the RRI community and play your part. The toolkit, of course, is, uh, and we feel it this way, is only the beginning. As some said before, what we need is a structural change of our institutions, and it, is, it doesn't count. Only one shot activity doesn't count, so, and this is very difficult. But now we have the tools, so we don't have excuses. Institutions know where to find the, the things, and, and that was the important thing of this project. So, um, it's important to say, and this is, we are a little proud of that, they have no excuses and it seems that we have, it seems only that we have a good toolkit. I'm happy to share with you that the toolkit has been gaining some recognition lately. At a recent issue of the journal Neuron, one of the most prestigious in the field of neurobiology of the cell group, the toolkit has been cited as an excellent toolkit by policy officers of the OECD. And now is the moment to talk about the sustainability. If we think that we have a, a nice um, product with us, um, we have to think on how we are going to continue. And I didn't want to skip this, this important question. 
So as Jordi Portavilla said before, uh, La Caixa Foundation has a commitment to continue supporting it and at least not to turn off the lights in December 2017. But it is now uh, a question of the community, a responsibility of the community. And when I mean the community, I mean as well uh, every kind of institution that you can imagine to sustain it. Uh, if it's really of use of the community, uh, it might need more resources and we have to, work to find the way of, of going further. And this is an open call for collaboration for any that would like to participate in a construction that wants to sustain the toolkit. So finally, I, don't want, I wouldn't like to finish without thanking everybody that has participated in the toolkit. It has been really great to have shared with you these three fantastic years. Where advocacy of this process of European Enlightenment has been a great part of our time for many. From my side, I would like to say, and, and the big thanks will come at the end of this meeting, but uh, it wouldn't have been possible without the best coordinating team that you can possible gather together as Belen, Eva, and the rest of the people that you can see, that you can see in the slide, and all the institutions that have been participating in the toolkit. So now it is time to see how we can move forward with RRI, and this is what we're going to do in the next two days, and, how, and see how RRI can help to produce, as some said at some point, not only the best science of the world in Europe, but as well the best science for the world. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference.